哭。Hey guys, welcome to another video. So a couple years ago, I actually wrote my own book. Now I wrote this back when I was in year seven, so the grammar's like really trash. And、uh, you know, I recently found the files and the entire book. So I was like, you know,、uh, might as well put this up on YouTube so that maybe I can gain redemption. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to aim with this, but just, just, just listen to it. Listen to how cringe it is. Okay. So, it starts with chapter one, creatively titled "The Steaming Bucket." <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> My ears were throbbing with pain as we landed in Japan. We had been flying on a plane for two days, and I felt relieved when we finally were allowed off the plane called Air Musketeer. I don't know why my dad hired that dingy old bucket of rust. Anyway, our family was extremely wealthy. It's pretty pompous. My dad was called here on a business trip. He was going to test out a new game and said that they would give us a free copy. It was called Elemental Bound and was about a fantasy world where people could control the elements and that an evil demon was destroying it. It was pretty cool to think about me being the first kid in the world to play this game. How could I be so rude? Let me tell you about my family. Now the thing is, this book is basically a ripoff of Avatar, because they could, well, they could control the elements and stuff. I don't know. I, I loved Avatar back then. Still love it. It's a great show.、Uh, one of my favourites. There is Hadassa, my mum, Jason, my dad, and my two bratty little sisters, Heidi and Kate. And they all have a part to play in this book that you'll find out sooner or later. But enough about me. How about I tell you about a real true story about how I found out that I was the last sage of the Thundercrack. <laughs> Everyone always used to make fun of me for the name Thundercrack because I said it sounded like a butt crack. <laughs> I don't know why. I d- now I understand. Yeah, it does sound like butt crack because you know Thundercrack, but it's just、uh, I'll I'll know. I was expecting something grand when we arrived at our hotel called the Steaming Bucket, but found out that rusty, rundown bucket seemed to fit the exact、uh, concept of the place. It did look steaming in that ancient building, and I thought that it was a hundred years old. When I went into my room, I said, "Has your company gone bankrupt, Dad, or are you just having hallucinations that this is a grand hotel or something?" What made you say that? He said, surprisingly, in a non-angry voice. This is an important cultural landmark. Besides, imagine how much fun you'll have exploring this place. I also thought you could feel what it's like not to stay in a grand hotel. I just found out that I did no longer have any questions when suddenly I heard a familiar voice say, "Mike." Oh, I almost forgot. My name is Mike. Mike Mitchells. <laughs> We're getting back to the story. I turned around and saw my friend from school, Luke Lloyd. <laughs> what is with what is with rhyming start and ending names? <laughs> Hi, Luke. I said to him in a surprised tone. Fancy meeting you here. Are you staying at Tokyo too? Well, why would I be here if I weren't? He replied. Like my mum's old gloves, they're the last thing I have to remember her by. His mum, Carolyn, had died having him, and now the only family he had was Caitlin, his big sister, and Jeremy, his dad. He seemed sad, so I changed the subject. What's your room number? I asked. Now I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but if if he never knew his mum, would he really be that sad? If she like because I don't know he's never met her would he still be sad even though he's like thirteen now Ugh, I don't even know I don't understand my mind back then room number four o two he replied awesome I shouted that's neighbouring our room dad can Luke sleep over I don't see why not he replied yes I shouted do you want to sleep over of course he said gleefully I'll start packing. It's amazing that a few little words can make a big difference because the events that came after this all date back to those words. Now, what are the chances of you going halfway across the world to Tokyo and then meeting your childhood friend? Brain fart? I don't know. So I asked, "Why are you in Japan? Are you going to a film festival?" No, he replied. We're just on holiday in Japan, you know, to see the sights. Well, I'm sorry that this sleepover isn't fun. I said, "What can we do?" I know. How about an old-fashioned hide-and-seek game? 
you hide and I seek. And whoever finds each other in the set amount of time gets a point. And at the end of six rounds, whoever has the most points wins. It'll be fun, but we'll just have to wait until everyone's asleep. Then creep down the hall silently. Sounds fun, he replied. But first, can we eat? I'm hungry. Ha! Best comedy ever. Perfect comedy. This this comedy... Beautiful, beautiful story. Better than Harry Potter. Be quiet, I said. Do you want us to get caught? Sorry, he replied. I'm just a bit nervous. So am I, I answered. But you can't say that this isn't fun. Okay, this is where we split up. I go one way and you go another. So we both split up and went in different directions. I walked along the silent and eerie corridor, glancing over my shoulder as if to see if anyone was following me. When I reached the wall, I counted to 35 and then started to walk back the way I came. Then I saw a corridor leading down and looking around quickly just to check if I was not alone in this spooky place, I started climbing down the stairs and I heard a sound coming from under me and entered a little room about the size of a caravan that led into half a dozen more rooms. Then I heard a pitter-patter coming from straight in front of me and before you could say Japan, it stopped. Before you could say Japan. (laughs) What was that? I said sullenly to myself. It might have been Luke. If it was, he must have heard me and ran into one of these rooms. I've got to learn to be a bit quieter. But that time I accidentally said it out loud. Then I heard a sound coming from above me. How did he get up there? Okay, so but basically, you accidentally said something out loud, even though you're already whispering silently to yourself. Makes sense. How did he get up there? I said out loud again. But this sound wasn't a pitter-patter, but more like a loud thud. Thud. Then I heard someone say, Hey, who's down there? Come on, come up here and show yourself, and I won't call the police. Uh Uh-oh, I thought. He's a security guard. I can't let him catch me or I'll be grounded forever. So I made the biggest mistake ever and hid in one of the rooms, and as I looked around, all I saw was collapsing darkness and heard a whizzing sound. Then a lightning bolt appeared on my arm and I fainted. Why would would you be arrested? It, It... I mean, you're in a hotel... You may be going into a private area, you're not going to be arrested, you're probably going to be kicked out of the hotel or something, it wouldn't be that bad. Okay, so the first chapter may not have seemed that cringe. But that's because you haven't got it to any fighting bits yet. Believe me, I could not do fighting scenes, and I still can't do it. I, I don't know how. Okay. Chapter 2. Fighting and flying. <laughs> Strong wind. Darkness everywhere. Moving shadows. Searing pain in arm. These were the only clues as to my whereabouts. I felt like a car just ran over my head and and then set me on fire. So the car set you on fire? It seemed that I was on top of a forest, but not like ones in Australia. For starters, it was a lot more peaceful and scenic. For a second, I felt like I'd been here before and seen this forest. It was actually more like an entire country because of the sheer size of the place, but it had forest-like sounds to it too. Everywhere there were coos and cacao. Kakaos, and once I could have sworn I heard a tribal song that sounded like Kua Pee Wee Wagga Wagga yeah. But immediately after that, it stopped. I felt like I was flying, and once felt a slight bump and a fiery hissing sound that penetrated deep into my ears and hit a bump on my inner skull. Wait, what? That makes no sense. I thought that my Karate Kid t-shirt was torn a bit because I felt cold sometimes and the fast wind was stinging it in the places that were torn. It was then that I realised that I was actually flying. It couldn't have been a plane because their roof didn't make a whirring sound. It couldn't have been a blimp either because they at least protect you a little bit. Maybe I fell out a window and Superman (laughs) saved me. Or Godzilla threw me high up into the air. But that's what a five-year-old would say and I would never be a wuss bag. Oh my goodness. (laughs) <laughs> uh, just kill me out of curiosity I sat up and thought I saw shapes like people but then I heard a hissing sound and smelt powerful sleeping gas then fell into a deep sleep that lasted for hours but then a sudden thud would happen and wake me up but after 20 minutes I would hear the hissing sound and smell the gas and fall back into a deep sleep sometimes it felt like I had been asleep for hundreds of years or even millenniums and then I would wake up to find that I was in the same place and time I was woken up by a thud bigger than the others and found out that I was being carried by something and my eyes were getting clearer every second and I could see men with swords in their pockets and somewhat bright wrists holding me up. Then I looked around me and saw what I had been flying on. It was a dragon! Whoa! Never expected that. No way. No way I was a dragon. 
I wriggled out of their grasp and started running for an exit out of this mad tribe. Everywhere there were blurry colours dashing past me and I could hear shouts and heavy boots coming after me. Then suddenly I heard a deep voice shout out, Perimeter breach! Perimeter breach! (laughs) Then I saw a knife whiz past my head and hit a nearby tree with a heavy sound. So I ran even faster and before long got puffed out and said, Come on, I'll take whatever you give me. Right now I was glad to have taken those dozens of boring karate exams because when one jumped to me I just gave him a chest kick and sent him spiralling at a tree. The next one came up from behind so I just did a backflip and landed on his head, knocking him out. After that there were waves of punches from me and in a few minutes all 50 of them were unconscious. Don't mess with me fools, I shouted at them. Then suddenly I noticed a symbol on their wrists which were glowing yellow. Uh, I'm pretty sure doing backflips and stuff isn't really karate, uh, but yeah, also, how did a 13-year-old take down 50, 50 elves? Because it's revealed later that these are powerful elves, so th- these guys probably sucked if they couldn't take down a 13-year-old who knew, like, green belt karate. Like, what the heck? Where am I? I whispered to myself. But then with a the loud shout, I said, Where am I? What have you done with my friends, beasts? But it was answered with a loud, fiery shriek, and then I saw what had made it. Oh no, I thought. These creatures have sent a dragon after me. Kill me, please. I I, I don't know why I wrote this. I mean, sure, I was 13 back then. But how could I write something this dumb? I used to think that this was the best thing ever. I used to love this thing that I made, and... uh, Uh, it's so bad. (laughs) It's so bad.